Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The U. My name is Robert Whitaker. Today, I'm gonna teach you guys how to easily create Python scripts to automate ACI tasks. I'm gonna cover the steps here very shortly, but first, I wanna talk about this guy. All right, here we have a, my friend Juan. He's very happy, he's incredibly excited. He looks like he's discovered something new. In fact, he has. He's actually talking to a colleague of his about something new he just figured out. He learned how to easily create Python scripts to automate a bunch of ACI tasks. And the best part is, he has very little programming experience, but he can still easily create these scripts. So I'm gonna teach you Yes, I'm talking directly to you. I'm gonna teach you how to create your own ACI Python scripts very, very easily. And we're gonna do this in six simple steps. Step number one, you're manually gonna perform the action you wanna automate at the APIC GUI. Step number two, we're gonna have something called the API inspector open. We wanna find the API call used to create the tenant. We are gonna copy and repurpose that data from the API inspector. And then we're gonna move on to step number three. We're gonna use that information from the API inspector to craft an API call in Postman. And then we move on to step number four. We're gonna use Postman to convert our API call to usable Python code. We're then gonna take that Python code, we're gonna copy and paste it into a script. That's step number five. And then finally, in step number six, we're gonna make little tweaks to our script to get it to work properly. Before we go into the lab, I just wanna provide a little context here. When you connect into the APIC and maybe you perform a task, like maybe you create a tenant, when you hit the submit button, the APIC GUI will actually send an API call to the APIC's own API to create that object on your behalf. And here's the cool thing, there's a tool on the APIC called the API inspector that you can use to see these API call messages. All right, let's go into the lab now. So we're gonna go through step number one. I'm at the APIC GUI. I'm gonna click the right gear icon and I'm gonna select show API inspector. Uh, and we see the API inspector here. It's logging API calls to the APIC. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the APIC GUI and perform the task I wanna automate, I'm gonna perform it manually. So I'm gonna create a tenant. Let's click on tenants. I'm gonna click on add tenant, and I'm gonna create the hello world tenant. Now, when I hit the submit button, remember the APIC GUI is gonna send an API call to the APIC's very own API, and I should be able to see that API call in the API inspector. So I hit submit. Here we are back at the API inspector. And we're actually moving on to step number two. From the API inspector, I'm gonna turn off logging. I don't wanna keep capturing API calls. I'm gonna search for something called a post. Anytime we create something on the APIC, in the API call, they do something called an HTTP post to create an object. So I'm gonna search for post, and I wanna look for the API call that references the hello world tenant that I just created. So I'm gonna keep hitting the next button. And then there we go. Notice here, I have an HTTP post and there's references to the hello world tenant. This data is invaluable. It's huge. What I can do is I need to take three very important things and I'm gonna use this to craft my very own API call in Postman. So that takes us to step number three. So in Postman, I'm gonna create a new API call. So I'll click this button. I'll select add request. I'm gonna create a new request. I'll just label it create tenant. The first thing I'm gonna do is set the HTTP method. We saw that we should set that as post. The next thing I wanna do is obtain the URL that I want to send my API call to to create the tenant. So I go back to the API inspector and I'm gonna copy this URL right here and I'm simply gonna paste it back into Postman. The next thing I need to do is obtain the data inside of the API call, inside of the payload. So I'm gonna highlight all of this, I'm gonna copy it, and I'm gonna paste this in to the body of my API call. So I'm gonna click on body, I'll select raw, and I'll simply paste it. There we go, we have just crafted an API call via Postman to create the hello world tenant. And that takes us to step number four. I can easily convert 
this API call that I created in Postman to Python code. To do that, I click this icon right here. When I hover, hover over it, it says code. I pull this menu down and I make sure I select Python requests. And when I do that, I have all this beautiful code. This is the API call in Python programming. All I do is simply click this icon to copy it to my clipboard. Boom, we're done with step number four. So in step number five, I create an empty Python script. I'm, I'm naming it create tenant.py and I simply paste the code into the script. That's it. So in step number six, we need to make a few tweaks to our script to get it to work. But I wanna provide a little context here. So we just created a file called create tenant.py and if we are gonna run that script and we want it to work, that script first needs to authenticate into the APIC and it needs to receive something called a special token ID. And then after it gets the token ID, then it can send the HTTP POST API call to create the tenant. Right now in our script, we only have the HTTP API call to create the tenant we're not authenticating into the APIC. So I'm gonna go back into my script. I'm gonna paste in authentication code that I tweaked to work with this code that we obtained from the API inspector and Postman. So I'm gonna hit enter a couple times and I'm gonna paste in the authentication code. Um, and at the top here is the authentication code. And then at the bottom here is the code that we created to create a tenant. So this code up here, we're copying and pasting and I'll show you in a little bit where you can access this code to paste into the scripts that you create. So we're gonna make a tweak to make the first part of this code, authenticating into the APIC, work with the second part of the script where I create a tenant. Now, when I log in here, I'm gonna get a special token ID from the APIC. And I'm gonna extract that token ID, and I wanna send that token ID in the header, in the cookie header, when I create a tenant. To get all this to work, I need to make a tweak or change the header in my API call when I'm creating the hello world tenant. So I'm gonna delete lines 28, 29, 30, and 31. So I'm gonna paste in a new header and I'll show you where to get this code shortly. But notice here it references an APIC cookie. So in step number one, we authenticate into the APIC, I get a token ID. We store that as the APIC cookie variable. When I said my subsequent API call to create the tenant, I wanna make sure I include that special token ID in my cookie header. And then I'm gonna make one more tweak so my script will work properly. I'm gonna disable SSL security check. And I do this by doing verify equals false. You might wanna leave this enabled in a production environment. All right, moment of truth here. I'm gonna go ahead and run my script. I hit enter. Oh, I got a syntax error exception. It's complaining about something at line eight. Oh, here we go, okay. This needs to be a string. So I'll put single quotes around it. I'll make sure to update my code. I don't know, I'm not sure how that happened. Clear the screen. I'm gonna run my script again. Oh, we got another error. Uh, it says, cannot create tenant object, hello world, already exists. You know what? I forgot to delete that tenant that we created previously in step number one. So I'm gonna go back to the APIC. I'm gonna delete the hello world tenant. Let's go back to my script and we're gonna give it another try. Boom, there we go, no errors. I go back, there's my hello world tenant. It's created. Guys, we just created a script to create a tenant. And here's my favorite thing about automation. I could easily make very minor tweaks to the script and create different tenants with different names. So I'm gonna do control F and I want to find the name of the hello world tenant. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply replace it with a new name. Maybe I wanna create the sales tenant. So I say search for the hello world tenant. There's four instances of it. Let's replace all instances with sales. Boom, there we go. Notice the URL and our API call changes to sales. Notice the body of our API call. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this script. I'm gonna go ahead and rerun the script. Boom, no errors. Let's go back to the GUI. There we go. We just created the sales tenant. So this is a big deal. Okay, we now have a Python script to create tenants. But here's the cool thing. Any action you can perform in the GUI, you can now easily automate. 
So if you want to configure VRFs, bridge domains, if you want to get statistics for interfaces, if you can do it in the GUI, you're likely going to be able to create a Python script to do that very easily. And I did that. I used the exact same process that we went through to create a script to create VRFs. Here's the authentication portion of the code. Here's the code that I generated by using the API inspector coupled with Postman. And then I made a few tweaks to the code and now I can easily create VRFs. So let's give this script a try. I hit enter, boom. We go back to the APIC. I go in the hello world tenant. I select VRFs. There we go. I had another script that I created to get interface statistics for port 11. Notice we're doing an HTTP get instead of a post to get information. But let's try to run this script. There we go. We get a bunch of statistical information about interface 11 on leaf 101. Notice I can see bytes average, bytes max, bytes min being sent and received on interface 11. Very, very cool stuff. All right, so hopefully you're kind of feeling good and excited like this guy. Um, if you want to obtain the code and practice the things I taught you, I put everything in what's called a tutorial. A tutorial is kind of like a step-by-step -step lab guide that you can go through. It's completely free. So I'm at Cisco University. Uh, to get there, you want to go to u.cisco.com. Uh, to find the tutorial, I think probably the easiest thing to do is just put in my name, uh, Robert Whitaker. You hit search. You go to the left. You check tutorial. These are all the tutorials created by me. At the time of this recording, there is no tutorial for what I just went through with you. But by the time this video gets posted on YouTube, like right now when you're watching it, you, this tutorial should be on Cisco University. Uh, I'm gonna name the tutorial Automating ACI, Creating Python Scripts the Easy Way. So you would just click on the tutorial and everything you need to go through a lab is in the tutorial, the code, how to access an APIC, step-by-step uh, -step instructions. So if you wanna be able to do this, definitely go through this tutorial. I hope this was useful and I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Thank you.